Hey everybody, Ryan here at eTrailer. Today we're going to be checking out the line of Fulton single axle trailer fenders with built-in steps. It sounds like a lot of people end up needing to replace their trailer fenders primarily because of tire blowouts. And um, you know, that's not really uncommon. A lot of times tires on trailers get overlooked. Uh, they'll have too much pressure, not enough, they're old, dry rotted and everything or you just have bad luck and it lets go and, and tears up your fender, which is almost inevitable going at highway speeds. Usually uh, stuff's gonna get, get chewed up. Uh, it sounds like too, sometimes people end up breaking them, uh, just trying to back into a tight spot or um, some type of maneuver that they didn't quite get down just right and end up damaging this. So these will make for a great direct replacement or even an upgrade in some cases. With that said though, Fulton does make uh, quite a few of these that are a little bit different and more or less it's just to accommodate different size wheels. So uh, quite a few of them there and that's probably the most important thing when you are replacing a trailer fender is to size it accordingly to what size wheel you run on your trailer. That way you have the clearance you need and it fits and won't rub and everything else. And uh, these are also available in a few different color combos as well. So we have black white, there's a silver one um, that you can use as well. So whatever one matches your trailer the best, uh, at least you have something to work with there. These particular fenders uh, have actually been on my boat for quite some time. Uh, I'm happy with them. I don't have any complaints. Um, the first thing that I kind of noticed though, these are made from a polyethylene material, they call it. To me, it's just like a really nice plastic. And um, you know, when you're going to stand on stuff, plastic isn't the first thing that comes to your mind of being super strong, but actually these hold up really well. Uh, especially, you know, as long as you have them mounted upright where there's gonna be a solid platform to stand on the ends, you're in really good shape. But in the middle, there's no metal or steel or anything holding that, right? So that would probably be the spot that's most likely to be compromised. And I'm probably 180 pounds. And if I stand on that with all my weight, no problem holding it. So as long as you're not jumping up and down or you know deliberately trying to break these things, um, you should be in pretty good shape and they should last for quite some time. One of the things too that I actually like about them being plastic is they're not gonna rust. And um, you know these are really popular on boat trailers. It makes sense because when you're on the trailer, it helps you get in and out and get everything loaded and unloaded and whatnot. Um, and usually, at least when I launch my boat, I run it until these are pretty much covered. So a lot of other people do it kind of the same way, kind of how theirs are, are set up. And so it's one last thing to worry about as far as trailer maintenance and it looking uh, bad and, and rusting out and everything else. They do say they're scratch resistant, um, which I would agree with them for the most part. These have a lot of miles on them and some scratches, not bad. It's not like they're primered underneath or something. So if you do get a scratch or nick, it's still just gonna show the same color that the fender is. So it's not super noticeable. And in terms of getting these mounted up, you know, everyone's setup's gonna be a little bit different, but um, I'll show you how mine's set up and maybe it'll give you some ideas. The way mine are set up on each end of the fender, there's a piece of angle iron that's welded to the frame of the trailer that comes out where this sets on top of. So if you look at the new fender, there's a cutout there already. And then there's some, some holes in it there. And so that's gonna lay on top of that metal and then you can nut and bolt the fender to that bracket. So a little bit easier to see from the bottom. So we'll check it out from, from there. So really straightforward how it works. Like I said, everyone's set up or, or um, you know, fabrication or ideas might be a little bit different, but the concept is simple, right? You need a piece of metal that attaches to the trailer that this can bolt to. Um, if your trailer isn't set up like this already, or you're adding these or whatever the case may be, um, and you don't feel like building something per se to make this work, we actually carry uh, brackets that essentially kind of bolt right up and are designed to work with these fenders to kind of streamline that process and make it a little easier on you. These style of fenders too, you know, they're gonna be easy to add your lights to, um, you know, as opposed to over aluminum or steel, especially if you have to cut. You know, this material is just so much easier to cut. And I have these uh, flush mounted type lights where it's a 
grime it like this and a little light and you can pop it in there. I think it looks good. Um, you know, and if you need some lights to replace on yours, you can always grab a setup like this here, or there's tons of different types. If you'd rather be externally mounted, you can always do that too. So really regardless on what type of light you want to put on the fender, um, there's going to be an option available. Just to kind of compare the Fulton fender to another one, I grabbed a CE Smith fender. And checking them out side by side, I don't think I'd hesitate to use either one, to be honest with you. Um, I feel like it's really just going to depend on your preference and, you know, the type of design you like a little bit better. They're both about equal in regards to, you know, the stepping platform and everything. Uh, I did notice, I feel like the CE Smith definitely has some thicker plastic. Um, is that a huge deal? I don't know. That's for, for you to decide. I did notice, so on the ends, the Fulton one, you does give you a little more space to work with if you wanted to mount like the light how I have on mine. I don't know if you could do that on this one. You might be kind of pushing it for space there. Uh, but again, not a deal if you're changing stuff anyway, you can always get a smaller light if you're picking up new stuff. Um, if you flip it over, what I did notice, so I don't know if I'm super crazy about how these mount, how the CE Smith ones mount. So we saw how these get set up, right? You got your bar that goes in there and it kind of bolts to the side. This one, it looks like a piece of metal would lay flat on this. And this is just plastic right here. So my thought is you could either take a bolt or something and, and run it up in through there and just make threads in the plastic. You know, probably not the best in my opinion. I guess the other solution would be just to drill straight through and mount it up completely through. They have the headier bolts up here. That, that'd be for you to decide, but personally, I'd rather not have to drill holes for a brand new fender right and then have bolts up here. So I'd rather have a, a, a you know, a straight platform there for me to stand on. But uh, just subtle differences that I thought were worth noting. Being that these are available in a handful of different sizes, I just want to reiterate, you know, to make sure that they're going to work with your particular application. Check your trailer, um, you know, your wheel size, and check the information on our webpage. She'll give you some measurements and, and some uh, things like that to kind of get you going and, and uh, you know, make sure these are actually going to fit with your particular trailer, whether it be a, a boat, utility trailer, whatever you want to put them on, really. Um, honestly, I've enjoyed them having them on here. Makes it a lot easier to get in and out, especially, you know, I got this in my garage. At home, I got the kids hopping up inside, playing in it, and it uh, makes it a little easier for them to get in and out. It's just a little things like that, you know. And if you were to ask me if I had a blowout or something and broke one of the fenders, if you were to ask me would I replace it with the same one, one I would, uh, without a doubt. It's been, been good, held up great, and uh, haven't had any issues with it. And that'll finish up our look at of the line of Fulton single axle trailer fenders with built-in steps.